Hi everyone, my name is Mario and today I want to show you how I built this outdoor sofa. This may seem like a lot of wood for one couch, but I'm actually going to make a couch and I love you with it. Although in this video I'll be building the couch, the same technique can be used to make the love seat. For the build, I used a total of 10 2x4s and 5 5 quarter by 6 inch 8 foot boards. But first, I had to pick out the best looking and least twisted ones. The way I approached this project was to first buy the cushions. I laid out one of the cushions and measured it to get the exact dimensions. The plan for the seat part was to have the depth of the cushions plus 3 inches. I rounded the seat depth to 26 inches and added 3 inches for a total of 29 inches to allow space for the backrest. For the width of the seat, I added the width of the 3 cushions plus 2 inches for a final seat width of 78 and a half inches. The depth of the seat will be made up of 6 2x4s. First, I made a box from 2 pieces measuring 78 and a half inches and two pieces measuring 26 inches. I placed the 26 inch piece between the two longer boards and screwed three two inch outdoor construction screws in each corner. Just so you know, this seat box will be built upside down, so place the nice looking side of the wood facing down. I then cut four two by fours to a length of 75 and a half inches and placed them inside the box spaced as evenly as possible. I screwed from the outside into each end of the 2x4s on both sides. Now that the seat platform is complete, it's time to build the sides. For each side, you'll need one 2x4 and one of the 5 quarter boards, both 8 feet long. Here I was cutting two 32 inch long pieces out of the 2x4 with 45 degree miter cuts on both ends of each piece to make them look like a trapezoid. The length of the short base was around 29 inches. I then set the seat on four scrap pieces of wood so I can sit down and get an idea of how high to cut the legs of the sides. I went with 28 inches for the height of the armrest. On each of the 28 inch pieces, I cut a 45 degree miter. For the inserts of the sides, I cut 3 pieces measuring 29 inches out of the 5 quarter board. After cutting them, I drilled 2 pocket holes on each end, but one of them will need at least 2 pocket holes along the long sides. This board will be the top of the three boards that will be attached to the armrest. I also measured 14 inches up from the bottom of the legs. This point will be the top of the bottom board and also the height of the seat platform. Essentially, the bottom board will be used to anchor the seat and at the same time, block the view of the 2x4 that makes up the seat. One of the features of this sofa is that the horizontal boards on the sides and backrest lie in the middle of the 2x4s. To achieve this, I used scrap pieces of 5 quarter boards as spacers to raise the horizontal boards. For the assembly itself, I used glue along with the pocket holes, leaving a 3 quarter inch gap in between the boards. I repeated the same steps to make the second side. Don't forget to clean up the glue squeeze out. To attach the sides, I measured four 12 and a half inch pieces to act as temporary legs. This allowed me to screw the seat platform to the sides flush with the top of the bottom board of the side. The screws went into the bottom board and also into the side legs so that the weight didn't fully rest on the bottom board of the side. After the seat was attached on both sides, I took off the temporary legs. 
the horizontal seat slats had some bounce to them, so I added two perpendicular 2x4s underneath. They were both also 26 inches long. To finish off the bottom half of the sofa, I added one of the 5 quarter boards flush with the front facing 2x4 using glue and screws. Here, I wasn't sure if I had enough space for two pocket holes, but after checking, there was enough space. The next step was to make the backrest. I propped up the cushion to see the height of the back. I went with 20 inches because it was higher than the sides, but it was still a few inches below the top of the back cushions. First, I cut two 20 inch pieces out of the 2x4 and then cut a 45 degree miter on one end of each of the pieces with the narrow side down. Then on the opposite side of the piece, I laid a wide side down and cut a 10 degree miter. Don't forget that the 45 degree miter cut will be facing the center of the couch. So make sure that the 10 degree miter is cut in the correct direction. You don't want to end up with two left sides or two right sides of the backrest. I clamped the side backrest pieces at the 10 degree angle and just as the back side reached the corner of the sofa sides. I screwed one screw on the side and one on the bottom through the seat slab to hold it in place. Then two more on the side for rigidity. With the two sides in place, I measured the distance between for the two five quarter boards. After cutting them to size, I drilled two pocket holes on each end. I also used glue on both ends of the boards, but toenailed two screws on the top board because it was going to be covered with the 2x4. After cutting the 2x4 to size, I realized I should also hold it in place mechanically instead of just with glue. So I drilled five pocket holes on the top edge of the top board. To make sure the miter joints were secured, I added hidden screws by using a chisel to peel back a little bit of the wood, screwing in a screw and clamping back that piece with a little bit of glue. I also went around the sofa and did the same to the front and back of the armrests. After all this, I sanded off the printing and the rough spots using a belt sander. Then use finer grit sandpaper to finish the sanding. After the sanding was complete, I wiped off the dust and added a coat of spar urethane. I let it dry for a day and before the second coat, I used fine grit sandpaper to remove any small bumps. For the bottom of the legs, I improvised and used a couple of washers and screw instead of furniture nail-on glides. The next day, I came back with the third and final coat. And this is the final product. Thanks for sticking around. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, comment, and share. And if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to subscribe. That way you don't miss any future episodes, such as when I built this outdoor love seat and coffee table to complete the set. Thanks. See you next time. Oh, what the?